Hey everybody, I'm going to talk real quick about why I think the Cube 3 is a fantastic bargain. Uh, it's, it's my go-to printer. I own, I own 14 or 15 3D printers. Um, I, I, refurb, I refurb quite a few of the Cube 3s, so currently on hand, uh, I've got 7 or 8 of them. I sell them locally, I sell them to friends, I, you know, I buy them cheap and I do a little bit to them and I flip them around with open source um, stuff so so they're ready to go for the next user but this is my go-to printer it's a very high quality printer all three axes roll, run on uh, linear rails which is the gold standard it's got a 0.35 millimeter print nozzle uh, so so fine very fine print nozzle um, and it's it's Bowden it's Bowden uh, filament feed so none of the weight of the feed motor or, or or that part of the assembly is being carried by the by the printer which uh, which would result in lower quality uh, it's got great dimensional accuracy uh, every time I print some things off and uh, figure out how close it is I end up somewhere around 99.993 or 97 percent dimensional accuracy uh, so very good the OEM slicer is is a little outdated, uh, but it can print at a resolution of 70 microns, which is 0 0.07 millimeter per layer. Uh, what you're looking at here was printed on a Cube 3. It is a silk, uh, or some might call it a metallic uh, copper, uh, and, and this is. When I mess around with new filaments, I like to print these off and fine-tune my Simplify 3D uh, profile for it uh, before I'm happy with using it. And uh, this is, in fact, Simplify 3D. Now, um, full disclosure, what you're not seeing are all of the supports right, that have been torn away. And that's really simplify 3D's bread and butter. They do it better than anybody. Um, all of the supports that allowed this print to be successful easily pulled away. Most of it by hand, some of it with um, you know, uh, it's, s some snips uh, and very little very little post-processing -pro was needed on this. Um, but, um, you know, if, if you'd like to see you know what it can do with the OEM slicer. There's a 3D Benchy, and it was sliced at the highest resolution, so 70 microns. Uh, and you know what you'll see here is pretty good quality, right up until you know a little bit of trouble with some bridging, but overall the bridging is pretty good. Uh, and right here it looks like the temp ran away a little bit um, and I would I would account that as uh, I, I would write that off most likely to this being retail PLA versus um, the 3D systems PLA their filaments tended to uh, needed to be printed a little bit hotter than stuff off the shelf um, if if you're looking into one of these um uh and and it's got pla cartridges uh le let me offer you some advice pull it apart you'll find some good videos on how to do that throw the pla out that's inside of it it will do nothing but cause you frustration pla is made, made out of corn it's comp it's it's also com compostable uh and uh their pla was made years ago so it is brittle which is not good for a bound and feed. Once it breaks anywhere along this path, that's it. Uh, every time you purge or try to print, you'll get a little drop of filament and that's it. Uh, so if you pull it all apart, put it back together, same filament, same thing, pull it apart. Uh, I would recommend just, if you're looking just to get by, just punch a hole on the outside of the case, feed uh, some retail filament into it, uh, flash the firmware to the hacked version. Uh, this is currently flashed to Cube 3, the hacked version, so it will never write 
to this cartridge, which is at 97%. It, it was at 98, but I went back and forth a few times and I, I, I made a couple of prints, uh, so it dropped from 98 to, to 97. Um, no big deal. I have a programmer if that ever you know dips lower and I have to worry about it. If you have something that's over 60% flash the firmware, you're good to go. You can run, you'll be able, you'll probably never run into a problem. The OEM cartridges came with about 400 grams of filament. So if you're at like, you know, if you have a cartridge that's like 40%, 35%, do the math. You want to print something big um, before, so, so you know whether or not it, it'll accept it. it. This software, the OEM slicer will tell the printer how much filament it's going to use. And if, the car, and if it knows there's not enough in there, it won't print. If you're using Simplify 3D, which is awesome, which really opens this printer up, you don't have to worry about that. It, it tells it that it's using, I think, a millimeter of filament. So uh, no big deal there. But uh, this is a great, great printer. If you're looking for one used, uh, make sure it comes with as many cartridges as possible. Even though they're probably, the filament's gonna be bad in them. If they have ABS cartridges, great. ABS is fine. Make sure it comes with some cube glue. Although you're only gonna need this if you intend to print ABS. I do use this for really big PLA and PETG prints also. Uh, the bed is not heated. Uh, so this will, this, if you're gonna do only ABS, Upgrade to like a lock build uh, and cube glue, and you're fine. You're you're not gonna have too many troubles. If you're only doing PLA, this is it. This is all you need. Elmer's purple. I use it for almost everything. Um, you will. You're gonna want to calibrate this when you first get it. And uh, one thing I like to tell everybody is never ever trust the auto Z gap. The auto level is fairly solid. Uh, if you run auto level and it accepts it, it means that the printer sees that it's close enough that it can correct whatever, whatever is off through the layers. Um, there's a really good write-up on Print3D Forum about that. And if you want to spend a weekend really truing it up, there's some there's some instructions on how to do that. Me, once I get it, once I get it to where it accepts, and I do a fairly big print, and layers, the the first layer looks good, pretty much all the way around. I'm happy. Um, uh, so auto level is good. If you ever have a problem where one of the edges is off a little bit too much, and you have like some lifting on that edge, uh, you've got you've got the three pads here. One is on a boss, never gets adjusted. Two and three get adjusted. Uh, loosen up this grub screw, which is 1.5 millimeter. Uh, not, it is not uh, English, so don't, don't stuff a uh, English in there, unless it's already been stripped, in which case you have no choice but to stuff, uh, I think, a 1 16th in there. Um, and give it a half rotation. Give both these a half rotation one way. Run the auto level again. It will, it will adjust and most likely land on true uh, when you're done. Um, the Z gap only measures from the I beams, right? So the print head assembly to the plate. And you might think, well, yeah, that's fine. Well, the problem is the print tips uh, ver can vary slightly and 0.05 millimeters is enough of a difference to 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 have poor adhesion or go from good adhesion to you know marring your print bed so i always make sure the tips clean uh and then i validate either with the oem z gap gauge uh this would be another thing to, to that would be handy if you're looking to purchase one of these i uh, use make sure it's got one of these or if it doesn't no big deal because this is 0.1 millimeters thick, which is the same length, same thickness as uh, as inkjet print paper. So uh, you can use that. I I'm going to make another video about how to calibrate this thing. Um, I I've got a, a couple of tricks 
and probably something in the printer that you may not even know how to use, you know, such as the, uh, the auto calibrate, show you how to do that, show you how to level this thing properly so that you never have to worry about it again. Uh, and I'll, I'll post that up within a few days, but, uh, you know, uh, happy printing. If you have any questions or, or need more information, print3dforum.com is really where you should be going. They, they have, this printer has a loyal following. There's quite a few enthusiasts out there on that forum that will answer questions quickly. They'll give you honest feedback. There's a wealth of knowledge on that forum. So uh, check it out. Thanks, everybody.